same days, I get a 2% discount. If I don't take the discount, the full amount is due in 30. So make sure that you know how to interpret those uh, credit terms. So those are, the, those are the two big things that can really get us uh, spun around in, in, these, uh, in these entries. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick up the ninth today and, uh, and go from there. Bear Tooth uh, Company paid freight of $2,300 on August 5th purchase from Summit Company. So just, just time out. Go back to the 5th. All right, look, look two entries up on the 5th. Here's what it says. Summit Company sold merchandise on account of Bear Tooth terms what? FOB shipping point. Okay, which means who pays? Buyer pays. In this case, buyer is bear to. Okay, so that, that's where this uh, August 9th entry is originating from that from that negotiation. All right. So uh, FOB shipping point uh, net end of month cost of merchandise sold is forty thousand. So here is bear to uh, paid freight two thousand three hundred dollars. This entry is actually pretty simple. You won't have a lot of trouble here. Uh, August the 9th, We know what do they use officially as a freight expense? A delivery expense. I've seen both. Let's say uh, delivery expense. Delivery expense is uh, going to be debited for uh, 2300 What's my credit? Cash. Good. Good cash. Okay, so no real, uh, no real trouble there. All right, now here's where we get to the uh, funny business, the 15. Got to pay attention to the word. All right, every word is important in, in these entries. So, so hang in there and bear with me. All right, Summit. That's who. That's our seller. All right. Summit Company sold merchandise on account to Bear to fifty-eight thousand seven hundred. Terms FOB shipping points. Who's paying? Them. All right. Uh, buyers paying an FOB shipping point. One in ten at thirty. Now here, here's a big, big important line right here. Summit Company paid freight of one thousand six seventy five, which was added to the invoice. So somebody tell me what's going on here. We negotiated FOB shipping point, but this says what? This says that they're paying, right? Okay. Why would they pay? If we negotiate FOB shipping point, why would they pay? Why would the seller pay? The buyer would pay it back. Do what? The buyer would pay it back. They're eventually going to have to pay it back. Okay. But why would they pay it up front? Microeconomics. That's what, what I'm getting at here. What is it? There are economies of scale. What does that mean? Bulk. Why do you buy things from Sam's? Why don't I buy ketchup from Sam's? Cheaper. It's cheaper. All right. I can buy two 50-gallon jugs of ketchup from Sam's. All right. And it's cheaper than if I buy 50 gallons at Kroger. Why? Bulk. All right. So a lot of times, what businesses do is uh, they may have a deal that allows them to do what? If they ship a lot of stuff. They ship in bulk. They can do what? They can ship for cheaper than. They can. All right. So what happens is, yes, they'll negotiate FOB shipping point, but the seller will still pay. And then what will happen? These guys will pay them back. Okay. So that's what we have to look out for a little bit later. Yes, it is FOB shipping point. We realize that. Okay. Which means at the end of the day, they pay. Right. Okay. But they're going to go ahead and prepay for them, and they're just going to allow them to pay the shipping back. Okay. Um, so, what does this uh, entry look like? Now, first of all, take what you know. Okay. We've seen this entry before. All right. We know what happens when we sell merchandise. Don't forget on the seller's books. This is uh, August fifteenth. Don't forget when we are a merchandising business, not a service business. A merchandising business. When I sell merchandise, there's two parts to the entry. Okay? I first have to record the actual sale, right? Okay? So we're going to uh, credit sales. 
What's my debtor? All right, accounts receivable. They have not paid me yet, so I'm going to debit accounts receivable. Now, there's a lot of amounts in here, and uh, here's, here's the, the amount we need. Though it says sold merchandise on account to Beartooth, $58,700. So that's what's going to go down uh, eventually on the income statement as a sale. Okay? So if we stop right there, all right, and hit pause, all we know right now is that, whoever this is, Summit sold $58,700 worth of stuff to bear tooth. Alright, so that's to record the sale. The second thing we have to do is what? We have to record us getting rid of the inventory. Right? Okay, so don't forget that. The debit cost of merchandise sold, cost of merchandise sold, okay, is my debit, my credit is the merchandise inventory. Okay? Now, don't get lazy on me here and just do 58700 Okay, We've got to find that second number. We have to ask ourselves the question, how much did it cost me, if I'm Summit, to get my hands on this stuff that I've turned around and sold for $58,700? It wouldn't make any sense to buy something for $58,700 and then turn around and sell it for $58,700. Okay? That's no reason for that. So, the cost of merchandise sold, it's, it's given to you. If you look down at the very last sentence, it says the cost of merchandise sold was $35,000. So there we go. Things I'm worried about on that entry is that you're going to leave this off completely. You've got to remember, there's two parts. We're a merchandising business to that sales entry. The other thing that worries me is uh, you're going to just use this number uh, right there again. So make sure you've got that straight and that uh, you know how to handle that. The other piece is what? what? What else do we do? There's more action over here. What happened? We do it. We pay the freight. Okay? So we cannot forget to record uh, the payment of the freight. We're going to assume that cash was used. What was the amount? Sixteen seventy-five. Okay? Um, this is where you might trip up too. What's my debit? Be careful. Push. Do what? Who said account receivable? Why? Because they're going to get it back. Exactly. Okay. Don't don't fall into the trap. All right. You put delivery expense. We're not paying delivery expenses. FOB shipping. Who's paying it? They are. Okay? We do not need to recognize an expense on our books. We need to recognize what? We need to recognize the fact that it's FOB shipping and they are going to pay us back. Okay? So what we need to debit is account receivable. $1,675. Alright? So when they pay, by day, I'm talking about bear to. When Beartooth pays for this merchandise, they're going to have to pay what? $58,700 plus $1,675. They got to pay me back. Does that make sense? Okay. Make a note there. Do what you got to do because this is when you get study, this is going to look funny. Okay. Because you're going to deliver expenses the first place your brain goes and it makes sense. Okay. Well, we got we to get out of that and know why we use uh, account receivable there. Um, now, we got to take care of these folks. August 15th. What does the sales entry look like for the purchaser? What they receive? Alright, they got some inventory. Merchandise. Inventory. How much? What do we have to record here? <coughs> Seventy-five to sixty thousand three seventy-five. What's my credit? Seventy-five 
That's what I, I'm going to have to pay that off. Accounts payable. $60,375. Now, notice this. It says nothing about repaying on the 15th. Right? Okay? So don't, you know, don't get in the rhythm and say, oh, I got this. Uh, I remember we got to pay this stuff. We're not paying the delivery expense here. Okay? We're doing what? We're just recognizing that we owe it. Now, if you want to break this out, you can. Okay, if you want to say uh, merchandise inventory and accounts payable and say 58700 and then come back and do merchandise inventory and accounts payable for the delivery expense, you can do that as well. Okay, either one of them works. Okay, it doesn't, doesn't really matter uh, which one you do there. All right, questions on that entry? A lot going on with that one. Okay, a lot going on there. All right, 16. This one looks pretty innocent, but it's, it's uh, got some teeth to it, so be careful. <coughs> August 16th, Beartooth, all right, they're, they're the actors here. Beartooth did what? Paid Summit for purchase of August 1st. Less discount and less return on August 6th. All right, so let's, let's get a little bit of history lesson, okay? Uh, this is referring back to the August 1st entry. Right? So let's, let's, let's look at where this originates and, and how we were sort of getting where we're going. So here's what happened on August 1st. Summit, these folks. Sold to Bear Tooth, these folks. Uh, merchandise on account, $48,000. Okay? So the original sale, I'm just going to do it a little, little bit right here. 48000 $48, that, That's originally what happened. Okay? So if we live in a world with no discounts, uh, no returns, none of that, okay? Economically, these people sold some stuff to these people, and these people are going to have to pay $48,000, okay? But we do live in a world of discounts, all right? And what are the credit terms? It says, if, uh, it says this, two fifteen net EOM, which means what? If I pay within 15 days, I get a 2% discount. If I don't pay within... Uh, 15 days, I gotta pay what? I gotta pay this full amount by the end of the month. Right, that, that's the deal. Okay? So, uh, what you'll see is this. It originated on August 1st. The clock stock starts ticking on August 2. That, that's when your 15 days happen. Alright? So you'll notice we're paying this thing off on the 16th. That is the 15th day. So the question is this. Do they get the discount? Yes, they do. They're paying on the 15th day, therefore what? They get a 2% discount. Okay? 2% discount on what? Well, the price. There's one more complicating factor, though, and it's what? Yes. Out of this, if you go back to August 6th, what happened? It says Summit Company, uh, no, no, Bear Tooth returned 10500 of the merchandise purchased on account on August 1st. Okay, so out of this original forty-eight thousand, what happened? Ten thousand five hundred was returned. Right? You, you with me? Is that, that making sense? Okay. All right. So they owe what? Thirty-seven five. Okay, we're not going to pay for the merchandise that we returned. Okay. So now we have all of our facts in order. This is the original transaction, okay? This is the amount that was returned. So this is the amount that they owe, but what? They get a 2% discount because they pay within 15 days, all right? So I've got to take this amount, 37500 and the question I'm trying to answer is this. How much do they owe? Okay? Not necessarily what is the discount. So if we break this thing out, uh, here is 37500 If I take 37500 multiply by 98%. Why did I do 98%? Alright, that's 100% minus 2%. That's, that's the amount i got to pay. Alright, I get 36750 Okay? 36750 so let's, let's think about it this way. Um, out of the 
the amount that I owe. <coughs> Here's my original. That's what I return. This is, you know, that, that's the amount in question. Okay? Out of that, I'm going to actually write a check for this amount. Okay? So what about the rest of it? What about the other 750? That's what? That's the discount. Okay? So, a lot of steps to get to that point. Okay? So here we are. We, you know, so, so original minus what we returned. That's what we technically owe. And this is how this 37500 gets divided up. I have to write a check for this. That's me being them. And this is a discount. All right. So what does this look like? All right. This is the, uh, what, August uh, 16th transaction. August 16th transaction. All right. First thing. All right. What do I owe? And, and, and think about it in these terms. I have an invoice sitting on my desk that says that, or this minus this. Okay? So the assumption when the invoice is printed is that what? I'm not going to take my discount. All right? So I have an invoice that says this. I have an accounts payable that says that. Okay? So if I have an accounts payable that says this, it means I have an accounts payable that I have to get rid of that is in the amount of what? $37,500. Okay? So first thing I have to do over here, I have to debit accounts payable for $37,500. Okay? That's the first thing. That gets the fact that I owe this amount of money off my books. It's showing as a zero. Okay? Now, what's the other part of this entry? I did what? Well, there's a cash component, right? Okay? Uh, cash uh, has to be uh, credited for what amount? What did I actually write the check for? I wrote the check for this. $36,750. Alright? Now, what's the problem? Alright, we're, we're far enough along to recognize the problem. Our debits and credits don't equal each other. All right, so there has to be something that I credit for 750. Okay, what is it? Not sell discount. Sell discount's only going to be up here. What is it? What was my original offset? Our not accounting dork talk. When I originally recorded this entry, what did it look like? I knew I debited what merchandise inventory and credited. Accounts payable. Okay? So, so here's the question. I originally, I've got inventory on my books that are at 48000 the original, minus what I returned of 37500 Inventory on my books has to reflect what I paid for it. Did I pay for it? Did I pay the full 37500 <coughs> I did not. I paid 37500 minus 750 Okay? Therefore, I have to come back under here. And credit merchandise inventory for seven fifty. That's my missing credit. Okay. What am I doing? I'm reducing. All right. If you, if you follow, if you, if you track the inventory account all the way down to here with all the movement related to this transaction, if you track it all the way through, that's what you'll find. All right. I have to have inventory in the amount of thirty six seven fifty. Okay. So let, let's think about it. Originally. I debited merchandise inventory for 48000 Then I did what on the 6th? I've got a credit to merchandise inventory on the 6th for 10500 And I just did what? I just credited merchandise inventory again for seven fifty. Therefore, merchandise inventory reflects this amount, which is the amount of the check that I wrote. Okay? Now, don't give up on that entry. Okay, you don't just sit there and say, well, I just missed that one. Yeah. You can do it. Okay? It just it requires some, some steps. Okay? And you gotta have a, a way that you think about it and a way that you can uh, be certain that you, you get it right. Now over here, August 16th, what happened? Obviously we got what? 
We got some cash, right? That they wrote a check over here for thirty-six thousand seven fifty. Where'd that check land? Landed over here. All right. So we're gonna debit cash for thirty-six seven fifty. Now we have a receivable on our books that says what? They owe me thirty-seven five, right? Okay? Remember, we send the invoice with the assumption they're going to pay the full amount and not take the discount. Okay? So, what have I got to do over here? Just like I got rid of this accounts payable, I got to do what? I got to get rid of my receivable over here. So, accounts receivable. Uh, 37.5. So, the question then becomes what? <coughs> What do we use to fill the 750? Okay. What, Max? There you go. That's when we use our new account. Sales discounts. Okay. Sales discount, 750. Okay. Remember, sales discount, we talked about that on Friday. Sales discount is a contra revenue account. It's a revenue account with a normal debit balance. And this is exactly when we use it. Okay, when we offer a discount and someone takes it, that's when sales discount enters the picture. All right, questions there? I know there are. I'm just waiting. Got it? You can do that. If I gave you a five point quiz and had that question, you'd make a five. You would? I don't believe you. All right. <laughs> August 25th. August 25th, Beartooth paid Summit on account for purchase August 15th, less the discount. Okay, so here's Beartooth, that's where the action is over here, August 25th. Um, this one looks pretty innocent, uh, I assure you it's not, there's a lot going on here, so, so again, let's make sure we got it. What happened on August 15th? Go back, get the history. Okay? On August 15th, Summit Company uh, sold merchandise on account to bear to 58,700. So let's start the analysis with that. 58,700. So again, a world where there's no discounts, none of that stuff. It's just, you know, straight fastballs back and forth between each other. Uh, they buy for 58,700, they pay it off. Very simple. Okay? Um, but we don't live in that world, right? So we gotta, we gotta think about some other things. It's a little more complicated than that. This is the one where FOB shipping point was negotiated, but what? Remember this? FOB shipping point was negotiated, which means eventually these folks pay, but what happened on the 15th? Summit paid, right? Okay, so this is gonna be a, a intricate little little transaction because we have to capture paying this off and the discount and what? And paying the delivery back, delivery charge off. Okay? So uh, the uh, terms were 1 in 10 net 30. Remember this happened on the 15th, this is the 25th, so they are within that 10 day window. Alright? So here's here's question number one. And here's screw up number one. Here's what you're gonna do. You're going to add this all together and you're going to say, all right, uh, they owe $58,700 plus $1,675. And you're going to add that number together, then apply your discount. Fault. Don't do that. Okay? The discount applies to what? The discount applies to this. Okay? The discount does not apply to the delivery charge. So separate those two off in your brain. All right? So if I got a 1% discount, that means what? I have to pay 99% of the bill. Correct? Okay? So, what I'm going to do 
do is multiply that cost by the 99%. Uh, 58,700 multiplied by 20.99. And uh, 58,000, 113 is what I owe. Okay? Now what? Now think about the delivery. Okay? So add to it plus 1,000. 675. That's break. Okay. Now I'll get my total. Okay. You can't get those steps out of order. Okay. If you take this amount, add this, and then apply the discount, it, it does not work out <laughs> in the same figure. Okay. So you have to take that original amount, 58,007, find the discount first, then come back and add the, uh, the freight. Okay. So my total here is. That fifty nine thousand seven eighty eight. Okay, that's the amount of cash that I have to come up with in order to pay this thing off. All right, so back over here, I've got to, I've got to record this entry. Okay, here, here's the original entry. It says accounts payable is sixty thousand three seventy five. So according to my books over here, I need to write a check for what? Just don't don't look at this. Okay, just according to the books, it says what? Sixty thousand three seventy five. Okay, so this was all I looked at. I knew what. Scratch a check for sixty thousand three seventy five. Move on about my business. It's more complicated than that. Okay, I do bless you. I do have to get rid of this though, right? Okay. Once I pay this invoice and pay this delivery charge and all this wonderful stuff, then what? I no longer owe this money. All right. So step number one is to do what? We got a debit account payable for how much? Sixty thousand three seventy-five. Now on my books, it shows what? It shows that I don't owe anything. Now I wrote a check, right? Okay. What did I write this check for? Fifty nine thousand seven eighty eight. When I write a check, I credit cash. Fifty nine thousand seven eighty eight. I've got to fill the difference. What do I fill the difference with? Same exact thing I did right there. Right? I did what? Credit merchandise inventory. The difference in those two is five eighty seven. Okay. That's it. Now, over here, August 25th, what happens over here? <coughs> All of a sudden you open up an envelope and there's a check in it, right? What's the check for? 59,788. So I got a debit cash. 59,000. 788. What else have I got to do? Remember, here's the origination up here. I got what? I got an account receivable that says what? Hey, these folks owe me 58700 plus 1675 Right? Okay? Well, here they are paying it off. So what I have to do is I have to get rid of my account receivable. Okay, count receivable in the amount of what? <coughs> 60,375. Okay, 60,375. <coughs> now, what plugs the difference? I've already heard it. Perfect. Sales discount. <coughs> Sales discount plugs the difference. And again, you're never going to use that account unless what? <coughs> It's not that you offer a discount, it's that what? It's that they take the discount. Okay? You can offer a discount and never <coughs> debit this account. If the person you're selling to never actually takes the discount. Okay? So what triggers the use of this account is what? The fact that the 
buyer pays within the correct amount of days. That's, that's what sets that in motion. And the difference is 587. Okay, so back to back, those two entries are pretty much the same thing. <coughs> Complication factor in there. But that's the general set. These two entries look exactly the same. The numbers are different. All right, uh, August 31st. This was pretty uh, garden variety. Uh, Beartooth paid Summit on account for the purchase on August 5th. Uh, so you'll notice something about this one. Uh, if you go back to August 5th, here's what it says. Uh, Summit Company sold merchandise on account to Beartooth, 66000 Terms FOB shipping point, net end of month. So they did not offer a discount. You see it? They just said what? Hey, pay this thing off by the end of the month. Well, here we are. August 31st, August 31st, end of the month, it's time to pay off, okay? So how much stuff are we talking about? Well, on the 5th, well, uh, they sold $66,000 worth of stuff. So this was pretty straightforward, simple. What happened? These people sold some stuff, these people bought some stuff, $66,000 worth of stuff. Now it's time for what? These people pay these people. Pretty simple, okay? So we know what's going to happen over here. We know we're going to credit cash for $66,000. We're going to debit what? There you go. $66,000. Over here, on uh, August 31st, what happened? We get a check in the mail for $66,000. So we know we got a debit cash. What's our credit? All right, yeah, somebody pay me. So I got a credit of $66,000. Now, you ready? I know you're going to miss this. You ready? What special journal could that be recorded in? We're connecting dots here. We're taking things from one chapter and combining with another chapter. Beautiful. Okay? Which one? Cash receipts. Hey, you got it. Cash receipts. Um, what about that one? Have you recorded somewhere else? We did the general. Could you record anywhere else? Revenue. Revenue. Perfect. Why? We're doing what? We're receiving money. We have money that has to be paid to us. All right, we sold merchandise how? On accounts, so we didn't receive money. We just got what? We got an account receivable and a revenue account credited. Okay, so on this exam, that's the kind of stuff I'm gonna be looking for. Okay, can you combine ideas? Can you combine concepts? Don't box it on me. Okay, I'll say, all right, chapter five, chapter six, just, you know, make a play together. Okay? <coughs> All right, uh, before you leave, on uh, Wednesday, we're going to look at problem 6-5A, okay? And uh, what we have to do in 6-5A is put together an income statement for a merchandising business, okay? It is, uh, we're going to take our original little income statement, our little podunk income statement that we did on our test, and we're going to ramp it up, you know, a couple of exponents to, uh, to a pretty serious uh, income statement. So 6-5A is what we're looking at uh, on Wednesday. And uh, that will be it for